Saturday edition of Lucas Tigers and Bronzo oh My. And I got to say, man, I love your shirt. Wrestle, WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Who is that? That's Ultimate Warrior. Right? You got Ultimate Warrior there. That's Randy Macho Man Savage. Right? You go down a little bit here. You got uh, the Heart Foundation, Brett the Hitman Heart, and Jim the Anvil Nightheart. Go down a little more there. That's Roddy Piper. And one of the best characters ever, that is the big boss man. He was a, a cop. And that is uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake and Jake the Snake Roberts right there. So there you go. That's the whole That's the whole card right there. I Pretty think awesome. it's a damn that it doesn't have Scotty Too Hotty doing the worm. Uh, Scotty Too Hotty came a little later. Came a little later. But, uh, you know, Ultimate Warrior was, he was ahead of his time. How much is, is wrestling 50% fake, 50% real, or is it all scripted? I believe it's all scripted. But I they're still I, athletes. Like, they're still doing yeah, incredible. so they have like to, yes, just, they ad lib stuff and you name it, but, it, but it, it's a show, you know? But what about, like, jumping off the ropes? Like, you still fall on the guy, right? Yes, well, that's, but that doesn't mean it's not scripted. You know what I mean? You know, it's scripted in the way you go and watch a cheerleader group do a cheerleader nationals and people are flipping around and jumping all over each other and throwing around. Or you watch a Cirque du Soleil where they have their moves in unison and whatnot. Exactly. That was a good one. Um, You know, obviously there's more to it than that. And I'm sure there are, you know, sometimes where they have to ad lib and they have to, you know, make it up as they go. But it's not like they go into it and it's Ric Flair against Hulk Hogan and they don't know who's supposed to win when they get into the ring. It's not like, okay, whoever wins, wins. It's not like that. <laughs> you know, like they know who's supposed to win. <laughs> Does it ever change? Like, do I ever change it up like midway through? I mean, not so during. They go, they go no, wrong. not during. I'm, well, listen, I'm, I, it wouldn't surprise me if it's happened in the history of, of, you know, of wrestling that somebody went rogue. They probably wouldn't get another fight, you know? So... Probably not did so you, yeah. Did you get to witness like first like when David Peck was great in cards like 2012, 2013, creating like the niche for wrestling? Were you aware of this or did you no. catch up with David? Like like when did you meet Peck? Uh before the show. I mean, I've been following on Twitter for a long time because you know, wrestling and UFC they kind of run in like similar circles, especially with Brock Lesnar. You know, we, you know, he was collecting Lesnar for wrestling purposes. I was collecting Lesnar for, for UFC purposes. So they kind of, you know, they mix and they mingle here and there. Undertaker was rumored to be doing a little UFC stuff. CM Punk was actually in the UFC for a little while. So, yeah, he didn't really fight CM that CM Punk well. sounds like, a, like an NFT. Yeah, well, maybe. They should do a CM Punk NFT. But so, so there was a little overlap there. Um, and it's funny, too, because I will tell you, the UFC world, nobody graded that stuff for a long time. Nobody cared, you know? And it's mostly because the cards were so condition-sensitive. Like, the 09 stuff, I was sending stuff to Beckett. And if you got a BGS 8, you were like, wow, this might be the best-looking one now. If you got an 8-5 on some of those, like, red ink autos from round one, I remember I got an 8-5 on a BJ pen, and it was the best one in all the pop of everyone out there. People were like, wow, you got an 8-5. That's, like... That's like perfection for those cars because they chip, they're sort of like PMGs. Um, so yeah, no, I, I took you off off track a little bit. So how much? How much did you sell that BJ Pen for? Like two hundred bucks? No, bucks? no, no, no. The the top guys, the red ink autos, there were only twenty five of them. So even then, they were expensive. Not not what they are now, but like you know, Anderson Silva was like twenty five hundred or three thousand um, dollars. Twenty eighteen, twenty seventeen, twenty fifteen. No, no, way back. You're talking about like two thousand ten, two thousand eleven. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, people were paying money for those cards. They're way more now, I think, especially graded well. Up there with like Steph Curry rookie cards. Yeah, up there with yeah. exquisite cards. Yeah, yeah. If if I were, well, first of all, I didn't hang on to the stuff anyway. So even if if I did, a lot of that stuff was worth a lot of money. I said this a bunch of times, like you know, Conor McGregor red ink autos. I was buying them for you know for a couple hundred bucks. I sold a red ink auto, which is out of fifteen. Conor rookie red ink auto out of fifteen. I had eight of the fifteen at one point in time. I was selling them for, you know, a thousand bucks. I mean, what are they, 10 grand now in, in great shape? You know, Ronda autos, they were crazy. They were a lot of money. But like, how um, much was like a LeBron Exquisite RPA at that time? 5K? Yeah. I mean, we've talked to people who said, you know, early on, they were, I think by the time I was collecting, it was probably between 10 and 20,000. But, but, you know, 10 and 20,000 dollars. I definitely had spent more than that on, on UFC cards, 100%. You know, there was a, um, um, what, what most cool. UFC guys would say this Anderson Silva, Chris Lieben, who no one's even heard of, but that was that was Silva's first fight in the UFC when he came over. Um, 
it was a a, um, a dual auto with a piece of the mat in it. So it was like Silva's first auto, cool, like out of 25. And that was like the chase card for round one, um, you know, the 2009 Tops product, the first one. And those were selling for twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars. I had two of them. Wow. You know? Yeah. And I would. So I UFC would, cards were like the first pump, and I use that word pump like it's kind of like a joke. But I like, don't know if it's a pump. I think what made them expensive was the same thing that makes F one cards expensive now. Maybe wrestling cards expensive now. Maybe soccer cards expensive now is is there wasn't a ton of it, and there was a real dedicated fan base that was chasing low pop stuff. Right, people were chasing. So, like when round two was out, it was the second. It was the second release. It had Brock and John Jones first autos in it, red ink out of twenty five. Like, how are those not going to sell for some money? You know what I mean? They're clearly going to sell for for a significant amount of money because there's more than twenty five people out there who want a rookie auto out of twenty five of Brock Lesnar. So it sells for a lot of money. Same. Do you remember how much like a Jordan Fleer would sell at that time, like a PSA ten? Uh, also probably around ten thousand dollars because I know in twenty seventeen those were readily available on eBay for twenty four grand. Jordans twenty seventeen. I remember coming in. I remember, um, in two thousand eighteen. Man, it was a memory lane auction, and I was going to buy my first like big card. I had done some really nice, you know, flipping and stuff like that. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna spend like twenty on a card. Never spent that ever before on a card. And I was like, I'm gonna spend twenty on a card. And I had my, my card narrowed down to two. It was a Jordan PSA 10 or a Hank Aaron PSA 8, 1954 tops. Hmm. And the, the Jordan sold for 24 and the Aaron sold for 23. I went with the Aaron, didn't go with the Jordan. I didn't regret it because it's still a Hank Aaron rookie. And, but, but, you know, the, for the entire time, that Aaron stayed at like 23, 24 as the Jordan went to 40, as the Jordan went to 50, as the Jordan went to 100. The Aaron's worth about 40 now. In retrospect, and we talk about this, like you probably couldn't get an Aaron again. Or are there a lot no, of PSAs? No, there's plenty. Yeah, plenty. There's plenty, there's plenty of PSAs. Yeah, plenty. Yep. Almost wow. every auction has an eight. A nine's a different story, but almost nine's every auction has an eight. Nine's a different story. Um, it's, I mean, it's still, it's appreciated. I mean, it, it's, you can't say it's a bad investment if you buy something for $23,000 in 2018 and here we are in 2021 and it's 40000 It's almost doubled in three years. Wait a you second. Know? Wait a second. Ethereum was just 1800 two months ago. <laughs> today, today, today it's, it's literally, it's, today it's, it's blood in the streets, blood in the water. it's 4000 It's It's two and a half times what it was a couple months ago and it's still, everyone's dying. But that's Can I happens. ask people, yeah, sure. guys, we can't control the world, but if you're listening, please don't be this guy or gal. Don't take out loans. Don't take out leverage. Don't bet on margin. Don't have 90% of your value in cards or in crypto. Shit, what I've, I'm not supposed to have 90% of my value in cards. Oh, my goodness. I got to go, guys. That, I got to go, go make some sales. <clears throat> that, to me, is my take because I love watching social media when things like this happen. And – that to me is the takeaway. It's not that ETH or Bitcoin are crashing. This is just how things work. They go up, they go down. You guys, when when Bitcoin or Ethereum goes up 25% week over week, you're like, I'm a genius. But then when it cuts the other way, it's like panic. And I think what I'm seeing is just a, a, people are drastically over leveraged. And I think they have a large portion of their net worth in these speculative investments. And I think it's so dangerous. Well, I mean, listen, the cautionary tale comes out always when there's a little bit of a downtrend, right? You know, nobody was talking, no one was preaching patience in the market yesterday. And then all of a sudden you have a 20% correction and it's boom, you know, oh, guys, get your money out. Well, the time to get your money out was yesterday, wasn't it? You know, but point is well taken, um, you know, but I think people in in a space who would who would try to counter your point would say, that they've been through 20% corrections before, it happens often, and that the only method tried and true of making money in this is to just hold on for dear life through any ups and downs, and ultimately you'll be fine, right? We talked about this, right? So yes, this looks bad. This looks bad. if you're over leveraged. I get it. Well, don't trade on margin and don't trade on money you don't have. But, but you know, people- even if 90% of your worth is, it's, and we could put ETH away, like if 90% of your worth is in cards, uh-huh. Anytime there's a dip in the market, right? There's two factors. The market dips, but that's not the issue. The issue is something from your life happens, right? Your car breaks down. You have a house payment. 
the IRS calls, you want to go on vacation and you need to liquidate when that asset is lower. That's where it gets dangerous, in my opinion. Yeah. But I mean, that's I mean, that's the risky take, I think, you know. It depends on how you look at these charts, man. I mean, Ethereum is an easy one to look at, right? Because it was $4,000 on May 5th, right? Remember that, you know, when, when Gary released me friends, it was $4,000. And then all of a sudden when it, when it, you know, after it released, it was like 1800, you know, it was like high threes to like 1800, like cut in half. But my, my worry is whether you got in at three or 1800, it's still higher today. It's not as high as it was yesterday, but it's still higher today than it was in May, you know? I see as much likelihood short term, like next one to three months. That ETH and Bitcoin, ETH can go, you know, from 4K to 2K. I see as much potential that that could happen as it could go from 4K to 6K. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, you know, around the holidays, inflation is higher, gas prices are higher. That's gonna sh that's gonna ruffle some feathers if that happens. I'm not no Shadamas. I'm not saying that will happen, but that's sure. a scary place to be. Well, listen, if this is why everybody should be listening to Ravel and have all their money in rare ticket stubs. How are you going to liquidate them? I don't know. <laughs> but that's clearly the place to be. You know, I mean, you don't want to be in, in ETH and you don't want to be in cards and you don't want to be in anything else. Definitely so, not I, top shot. I understand what you're saying. And I, I guess the, the the thing about it is take a look at where we are in the calendar year. Take a look at where we are in the world. Take a look at what's going on. We have, you know, new variants, new, you know, new Omicrons. And, um, you know, we have... Um, we have Christmas, we have the holidays coming, so people are already looking to take some money off the table. You also have tax loss farming, which is a lot of fun. People don't factor that in. Tax, um, tax laws? Yeah, tax yeah. loss, L-O-S-S, -S, tax loss farming. So if you have gains during the year, uh, people will start to sell things now to lock in a loss to offset a gain. So let's just say, for example, you made $10,000 on a Michael Jordan card. But you also have five cards that you lost two thousand dollars on, but you haven't sold them yet because you you think they were going to come back, right? Your accountant might tell you sell those five now at a two thousand dollar loss, and then in January buy back in at the lower price because during this year you're showing a ten thousand dollar gain on that Jordan and a ten thousand dollar loss against it. So when you lock in, that I loss, literally don't have to pay taxes ever. My little orphans are going to be the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> you have to sell them though. You have to be careful. Someone because, needs to buy them. No one's going to yeah. buy them. Can and I burn then, them? And by the way, therein, there's your whole, it's, it's, that's more crypto because I try to bring into cards, but that's an episode. Like that is part of a crypto episode because yes, part of the problem is you bought into that and you have, you don't show a sale. It's very difficult to say, Hey, that's worthless unless you have a sale for zero or a dollar. Interesting. Or so bull bull, if you guys bought in bull, 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 bull. by the way, bull bull is the butt of our jokes. But if you guys watch his highlights, the guy can play. Flat out, the guy can play. I don't know why he so, doesn't get more time. One of the reasons cards get a are, are a step ahead of NFTs in this in this range is because no matter what, you can put your card on eBay and liquidate it for something for, for like a penny. If it's a penny, if it's a dollar, or whatever it is, you will show what it was really worth and be able to liquidate it year end. And by the way, guys, that takes me to my my play of the day, which is. Look for your bargains at the end of the year. I went to the post office today, sent out a whole bunch of PSA returns, but there was a jumbo-sized box in there going to Probstein. And it was a lot of crap that I got back from PSA returns myself during the course of the year um, that I had sent in that got garbage grades. You know, I'm talking about like Josh Jacobs rookie optic PSA 5. And, you know, like <laughs> you just, really get a, just – You got a 5? Yeah, on a, on a red-yellow one that we pulled out of an optic. You know, who knows what the five, what, why it was a five. It looks like a nice card. You know, like Kyle Lewis, where I sent in 40 of them without even looking, and I have some sixes. You know, I just throw them, I, they're all in a big box, right? But also some other stuff, just, you know, hey, if I'm, if I'm sending a thing to Probstein anyway, I might as well throw some other, you know, fun stuff in there. You know, little Mariano Rivera in there. You got like all kinds of stuff. You're throwing in, you might it's as well. Funny. You Go guys, ahead. like, I want you guys to know that we feel it too, right? Like, Cage gave Kyle Lewis. Yep. As a play on like July 30th, he said that Kyle yep. Lewis is going to be AL Rookie of the Year. That's right. And he so won. Two MLB seasons ago when these cards were subbed to PSA. That's right. <laughs> it's true. Like, little, like you, you, you called this guy, he had his success, and then you get the cards back 12 months later. So it's you're not yeah. immune to him. Listen, he'll be fine. Seattle's going to be a good team, man. Sign some good, sign some good pitchers. You know, they're uh, they're they're making a run in the American League. American League is going to be like the NBA this year. It's going to be a lot of parity. 
you know, some of the some of the big some of the big teams like your Red Sox and the Yankees, they're going to come down a notch because they haven't signed anyone and their pitching is not that great. And some of the other teams that were middle of the road are taking steps up. You know, they're they're signing big pitchers. They're, you know, the Mets, the Mets, Mets are not in the American League, but yes, the Mets also same kind of thing. Like there, there's going to be a lot of a lot of teams that are competitive because of some of these signings. There, there wasn't like a huge wow, you know, like look, this team is so much better than everybody. The Dodgers got a little worse. You know, Tampa Bay, you could argue, got a little worse. Um, so what's the, what's the play? Is it just like bargain hunting? Oh, the play is keep your eye on sales at, the, at this point in month. Not just on eBay, but that's where I would be looking for the bargains. But even the auctions that are going to end here, unless you're on old liquid auction. But over the next couple of weeks, people are selling their stuff. People are listing things, one, for tax losses. So, so you know, some of them are things that, you know, might not be the most desirable, but you can grab them and probably flip them um, next year. But um, the more important is people are listing things because they need holiday money. I mean, people want to buy their Christmas presents for people. People want to, you know, get the, you know, you got to, you know, buy your gifts and all that stuff. People are listing things. And not only are people going to list things, but you're probably going to have less people bidding on some of these cards because they got to buy the Peloton and, you know, they got to, you know, got to, you know. Are you getting a Peloton? No, I'm not getting a Peloton. Negative. I'm not getting a Peloton. Have you done I a have, Peloton workout? I have enough laundry racks in my house without getting an exercise bike. I know it's like kind of tacky, but dude, the screen really helps. Like it, whenever I don't want to do a workout, I don't have a Peloton, but I like I we're at Lowe's hotel in, um, in Chicago, the hotel had a Peloton. I know it's so easy. You just go down there, you put your shoes on, you type in like, Oh, I like this girl. And I like her music and it's easy. I don't have to think if they, if they, Unlock their humongous LCD screens and allow you to watch Netflix on them or something like that. Perfect, but no, you have to only watch. You have to only watch people yelling at you. I do not respond well to people yelling. Pedal, you fat ass. No, thank you. How about this? F you. She, she doesn't say that. She does. They say it to me. She says, hey, you fat can ass. Do it. You're stronger no, no than you says, think you are. Nobody says that to me. They say, hey, fatty. Stop pedaling again, you fat bastard. This is not break time. This is bike time. That's what they say to me. They don't say that. I they promise. do. They say it to me. They say, "Fatty, they put have down, custom, put down a, the iced coffee, Fatty." Custom recording for Cage. Uh, <laughs> what, what does a deal or a bargain look like? Like, would you be looking at Prism? Would you be looking at Raw? Would you be looking at PSA tens? Would you be looking at PSA nines? Would you be looking at basketball, baseball? It could be it could be anything you like, right? I mean, it, it, baseball, basketball, baseball definitely. There's a lockout, which I don't think is going to actually impact the season. It's definitely bargain baseball, but it's really just a matter of the timing of it, right? It's not just Christmas, holidays, you name it, and tax farming at the end of year. It's a human nature thing. Like you go on story sales, haven't you noticed an uptick in people with story Tons. sales? Tons. Right? It's because for whatever reason, New Year's resolutions or whatever you want to do, people spend this month cleaning up their collections. Whether it's NFTs, whether it's cards, whether it's, you know, uh, ticket stubs, whatever the heck it is, people want to start anew next year, turn the page on this year, and people will, will trim their collections down, people will sell stuff, people will list things that you might not otherwise see. Um, and because of this, there are usually bargains because it don't, people are doing that at a time where there's, I believe, less money being spent on cards because people are buying mistletoe. Um, and people are buying, you know, Hanukkah candles and, um, you know, people buying inflatable, um, dinosaurs with Santa hats for their lawns or whatever it's going to be. You know, I mean, this is how we celebrate the birth of Christ, right? I mean, inflatables on the lawn. That's how it works. Right. Um, I'm allowed to say that, I think. So don't, don't hate me guys. I just, you know, remember the reason for the season. So, um, I don't hate it, man. My, listen, my. I have my Bible right here. I, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big believer in. Uh, it's funny Phil we celebrate Christmas. Philippians. Well, I, I was raised Jewish, man. We celebrate Hanukkah, but I'm a big believer. Like you should read the Torah, you should read the Bible. They're they're ancient works, and they're some of the most practical. Not the Quran. Yeah, you you probably should read the Quran. I, I haven't, so I don't want to speak on it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you should. Maybe you shouldn't. I, don't, I hope I don't offend anyone. I don't know the I don't know the history of it. Like I, I don't. I mean, listen, this show, we. Which, I by the way, it. can I can I just real quick shoot? Yeah. Uh, a lot of stuff like the other day, I talked about <laughs> how Card Ladder wants to have you know reputable companies, grading companies on their, on their, <laughs> account, so they they might not have a ton of SGC cards or not at all. 
it's not that I'm saying that SGC is not good. And someone from our audience came out and not corrected me, but we had like a dialogue. He educated me. I learned same thing with the Quran. Like if you think like if you if you listen to this episode and you're Muslim and that's your faith, so hugely support it. DM me and I'm I'm willing to learn, man. I just love that we talk about everything here, man. Last week we were talking about Hammurabi's code. What sports card podcast to talk about Hammurabi code? Nobody. Now we're talking I'll about ask you, Quran. I have a really good question. Really shoot. good. Shoot. Shoot. So I don't know if this qualifies as bargain, but false. Have Grizzly you, bears, bears, black bears. Which bear is best? <laughs> Eats bears. Battlestar Galactica. I I love the Office so much, man. False. A lot of people say the British Office with Ricky Gervais is better. I said that also for a long time, and then I rewatched the regular. You know, obviously there's more of it. I watched it with my my kids a second time. People who say that they watch the British Office first. And they don't give the American one a pass because it, it people don't realize this. It legit was a full on copy. So the British one was one season, right? One season. And all they just basically did the exact same storyline. They changed the names to protect the innocent. There wasn't a Jim and a Pam, right? It was the same kind of thing, you know. The British names. What was yeah. that? Instead of Dwight, it was Gareth. You know? <laughs> so and um same same story, you know, same like you know, engaged, one nerd guy, you know, Jim was a little more nerdy, the Jim character was a little more nerdy, was Martin Freeman, who you've seen in uh, in the Marvel movies. He's the agent that gets shot, and they bring him in Black Panther, and they fix his back up, and uh, no, you know, whatever, Martin Freeman, you, you know who he is. Um, anyway. this, will, this will surprise you, never seen Marvel, never seen Iron Man. You've never seen uh, any Marvel movie? I watched Ragnarok yesterday, it was amazing. I, I saw, like I saw Transformers, times, the first one. We went with our friends, and I walked out. I thought it was the worst thing ever. Transformers. Uh, well, what kind of movie do you like? I like comedy. I love comedy. love comedy movies. Comedy. Um, I like thrillers. Thrillers. Dude, people are going to chew me out. I love rom-coms. People expect that. I'm surprised it came third on your list. <laughs> I mean, when I met you and you told me Notting Hill was your jam, I was like, all right, man, this doesn't surprise me. You know, four weddings and a My funeral. My favorite are Five Hundred Days of Summer and mm-hmm. the breakup. The breakup. Well, breakup's funny. Vince Vaughn's funny. He's so um, fucking funny. That's you know, I, I I won't fault you for that one. You know, it was the time you told me that you just watched Steel Magnolias on repeat, and I was like, okay, that might be going a little far. And you I know? love Mafia, but I like Mafia shows more than movies. Like Godfather to me is like three and a half. I've watched Godfather. Respect. Uh, yes. Love the Godfather. But I, the Goodfellas love it. But like they're too long. Like right now, Moff, guys, I don't know if you heard this. Patrick Bit David, he we had him on the show. Mm-hmm. Big card collector, but he loves mafia stuff. And he's interviewed a ton of mafia people. Uh, and he had Sammy the Bull Gravano and Mike Francesi and Rudy Giuliani. He got them all in a room to do a 10 part series called Mafia uh, States of America. And it's um, narrated by, you guys know this guy. I just can't exactly remember his name give me a second what's he from he's from movies he's from movies well, that does not Chaz Palmet- Paul- Chaz Paul- Palmetary yes Sonny from Bronx Tale yes 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 so I'm watching that 10 part series of the conversations of the in and out and the workings of the mafia I think it's so cool because they break down the this is not a card episode at all sorry guys uh they break down the mafia <laughs> in gangsters and racketeers Gangsters are the ones that are like they do the the, the the killing, the fighting. Then there's the racketeers, and like there's the whole business side of the mafia, you know, controlling the unions in New York. I mean, Michael Franchisi, like how they defrauded the government of, with oil. I mean, just so interesting to see how they their operations run. So if you like that, just on the other side of it, right? It's not exactly a mafia movie. Um, it's a little long, but it's probably within your window. Take a t- couple of fun movies. Take a watch of Hoffa. I heard it was terrible. Just watch it. Just watch it's it. Because terrible, if you, right? if you like, heard if you heard it's terrible, I bet you it disappoints to the upside. If you go with low expectations, sometimes movies is. I heard John Travolta was so bad in it, and so in a, John Travolta is not Hoffa. Oh, that was Gotti. That was Gotti. That was okay, Gotti. Well, that, was that was horrible. Okay. Right? And that movie, that movie, I will always hate, and here's why: people don't realize this. That was made by MoviePass. 
the Gotti movie. It was a Helios and Matheson. You remember that movie pass? Remember that whole stock where everybody got killed and got wiped out? Yeah, uh, that was like one of their own like direct movies. Um, and that was terrible. Hoffa is a different it's a, it's Jack Nicholson and oh, Danny God. DeVito. Hoffa was guy of FBI. Teamsters. He was the head of the Teamsters. The union. So, exactly. So you're talking about union stuff and the whole night. So I got a question for you then. Yeah. You you know I should pull up on on a on a um you know on an iPad here, but I don't have it. But if you you know if you feel like it, can you do me a favor and type in Al Capone into eBay and see whether or not he has any cards? Sure. Or if there are any gangster cards out there, I know there's Goodfellas sets, right? I know I, mean, I know there's Soprano sets because we gave that as a play with the with the movie that came out. But I heard that movie kind of bombed. I still never watched it. Um, and I know that there's like Tony Soprano stuff out there. But hey, you're talking about you know talking about gangsters. I wonder if there's like a cool like little what well, is this that is, a check? This is kind of cool. What is that? So so fun oh, fact. Yeah. This is guys how I search just to give you like anytime there's a name that's like culturally yep, relevant. Yes, I. I always had a PSA at the end, uh, shameless plug. Uh, I, I so search Al Capone PSA, and I only see one thing, double signed autograph check document. Wow, look at that, though. $95,000 for an Al Capone signed check. Poof. It takes some digging, but yeah, both signed. That's I just kinda... wonder if there's like one of these oddball sets from like the 30s or 40s or 50s where it's like, you know, American gangster type, you know, sets, you know, where they have like, you know, they had all kinds of, like, you know, the, the horrors of war type sets. And I wonder if they ever had one, you know, with that. Because if you're a gangster movie fan, maybe you find one. Who knows? I, got, I, I saw that at National. I didn't really love it. Like, I love, I'm a big history guy, but I don't, like, there were Adolf Hitler cards. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand it. And I'm a free speech through and through guy. Mm -hmm. But I didn't understand it. Like, I did, it, kind of, it didn't rub me the wrong way, but I was like, hmm. Shouldn't be investing in this guy, but like then I'm like, who am I? But I, 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 I didn't didn't sit well with me. All right, I get it, and I mean, you know, you could say the same about gangsters and and the and the like, you know. So swing it the other way, find an Elliot Ness card. Who is that? That was the Treasury agent who was responsible for bringing down Al Capone with his with his staff, who eventually got him on tax evasion. It's funny, right? Like this guy kills with tons of people, like just does a bunch of shit, and the IRS are the one that get him. Have but, you ever but, seen but, the movie The Untouchables? That you should watch. That Al Capone is played by Robert De Niro. De Niro's the king. A very good early De Niro, and it, I mean not early like Taxi Driver, but take a look at that one. Elliot Ness is played by it's. I'm talking about all star cast. Elliot Ness is played by uh, Kevin Costner, and uh, you know his second is a, a beat cop played by Sean Connery. Um and you know, Capone is played by De Niro. It's it's, it's that, that's the score in that is fantastic. The music for the movie is fantastic, and there's some real great like cinematography scenes. You know, baby stroller going down the stairs in, in the middle of a shootout kind of thing. It's a, if you haven't seen that and you're into like the mafia stuff, and that's not a terribly long movie. Um, you know, Untouchables, good movie. So the question, and I think this is going to surprise a ton of people. So if you entered the hobby in 2020, 2019, 2018, it wasn't even close. Silver was 1A. Hyper was like 2D. Yep. But Luka Doncic, PSA 10, of uh -huh. the Hyper and the Silver. The Hyper sells for 5500 bucks. The Silver is now is about 3600 to 40000 So let me give you guys the pop. I'm curious what Cage's thoughts are. There's only not. 92 PSA 10s of the Hyper. There's a ton of print lines on that card. Yep. To get a PSA 10, it's impossible. But honestly, they give out PSA 10s with print lines sometimes. Uh, there's 2,097 silvers. Cage, any thoughts? Take it away. Like, what, what do you make of that? Is I think that, the Hyper's I, ugly. Honestly, I think the Hyper's an ugly card. Um, but, I mean, it, it doesn't surprise me when you look at It's got 1 20th, less than 1 20th of the pop. So it's always weird that it was, you know, so much less. But the explanation there is supply and demand. There's Which probably good, right? there's probably about twenty times the demand for the silver, right? And one twentieth the demand mm -hmm. for the hyper, which is why they're similar in price. But, so, but what happened when I entered the hobby? I was told this: like, be weary of buying choice because it's retail. Yeah, and retail gets less love. Yeah, there's a choice out of five, out of 25, 
But don't think of choice as it's right. going to be on par with a gold hobby. and gold shimmer are not the same. Correct. But here, hyper is a retail product. No, hyper is not retail. Mm -mm. No. Why was I was under the impression that hyper is retail? No, hyper can be in anything. Green is retail. Okay. And green, if you look at the pop on green, I'm sure green Luca is pretty low too. But that sells for crap, I'll bet. Mm -hmm. You know, the, I know this because we had a Zion green. And by the way, we haven't talked about Zion. Right, wasn't there some news on Zion that his foot is hurting again? Did you see that, or did I just? I thought it was the stupidest news I've ever seen in my life. Did I just the guy see a who's tweet? recovering from a uh, surgery has a sore foot on the? But are they foot. like are they slowing him down? Are they are they sl slowing down his return to basketball activities? Is that what's going on? Like people were like uh, you know hyped up, he could come back, and now he might not come back. It's not good for investing because you never want to cut off hype. You want yeah. hype to accumulate and build that a snowball effect. So I do see that. But like when I saw that article, I commented, I was like, wait, a surgically repaired foot is sore from working from practice. That's what happens. Yep. Uh, so I thought it was one of the stupidest. Like it doesn't matter if it's sore. They do x-rays on a broken foot to see if it's healed right. There's not much, like much guesswork like with a ligament. Well, I mean, let's Pash Pastry family, tell me if I'm wrong or right. <laughs> our resident doctors i love it it's funny i sent i sent pastry a uh a happy thanksgiving they got back to me today they're like hey just saw this i was like hey happy thanksgiving you know, like, Disney but, guys but, and but it's canada so maybe they were just mad because you know Too they sure. don't celebrate thanksgiving you know like, maybe they're just like yeah God. second question first off panini mosaic came out it's, it hasn't sold out on panini panini's website surprise okay. no Anybody who watches a box opening shouldn't be surprised. What are they selling for? Seven fifty on their website for yep. a box. Seven fifty for a box of mosaic, right? And I, those aren't first off the line, right? No. And guys, I my LCS reserved the box for me, and it was five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars. I forget exactly what it was. It was definitely below what Panini is charging, right? And I said, all right, I'll take a box, I'll open it with you, okay? I think any hit that's decent, I'm gonna sell and I'll whatnot show on Sunday. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Tomorrow's whatnot show. Like, I got I got a couple Lamellos, but not even the regular Lamello. I got a Lamello debut and a Lamello National Pride. Cool, they're rookie cards, but they're not anything crazy. I got Edwards. I got an Edwards debut, like the mosaic-y one, but not his base one. You know, just the debut. Um, and there are some cool insert cards, but you get one autograph in a box, and my autograph was a non-numbered Robin Lopez autograph, Encino Man. Right, and I have to text my 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 LCS. And by the way, I also bought a box of Optic Contenders, which is a, the ultimate hit or miss product because there's like five cards or six cards in the whole box, right? And I think Panini has that. I don't know if it's sold out yet either. They're they're selling for five hundred dollars. I think my guy was three fifty or four hundred. I don't know exactly. I spent some money on these two boxes. You know, that's like four hey, figures. Richard sells for three hundred. No, the fucking box does, and oh. I got a I got a Peyton Pritchard like non numbered, hollow auto. You know, contenders auto of Peyton Pritchard. What is that gonna sell for? I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow on whatnot. Thirty 50 bucks, bucks, fifty bucks. You know, whatever the hell it is. I'm not a Peyton Pritchard guy, so someone's gonna get a bargain on it on whatnot tomorrow. But the point is, that can't. I, I feel bad. My guy sold them to me at New Market. I'm sure he made money on it below what Panini's selling it for. He sold to me. He got him direct, and I still texted him. I was like, "This is shit." Like here's here's what my thousand dollars got me, and I sent him a picture of Peyton Pritchard and Robin Lopez side by side, side by side. And he's like, "Well, well, you know that Pritchard one is nice. It's really nice looking." And I'm like, "He nice. responded, no returns or exchanges." No, he's a cool guy. He feels bad, and I feel bad making him feel bad. You know, because he he could probably sell the stuff online for more money than what he's selling it to me for, and not get a text saying, "What the hell are you selling me?" You know what I mean? So, so I mean, but listen. Guys, there's only and, and PS GTS is cutting off his distribution, cutting off his allocation. Yep. Can you believe that? This is a guy who's been in there forever, right? He gets direct product. He doesn't he hardly gets any prism. He hardly gets any anything. And GTS is like, yeah, man, we're not giving you. You know, you you I know you've been with us forever, but there are people out there who will pay what we're what we're willing to they're they're marking up. The product so much from the distributor that he's like, I can't afford it. Like, I won't make any money on it. I'm not going to charge my people that. And there are people who distributors will give to that are, you know, non brick and mortar, you know, whatever it is. And they'll just, they'll get their, they'll get their stuff. Or the distributors will sell it to the big guys. They'll sell it to, you know, 
whoever else it is. But he has my little hole in the wall. He's literally been there for decades, and he's not getting I, I like this model. So this model came from uh, the cafe business. So we have distributors too, like Balford Farms is a distributor, right? They aggregate cheese, bacon, turkey, uh, turkey breast, uh, eggs, all that stuff. And they'll bring it to you and they'll sell to you as a cafe for wholesale or whatever. And like, But I like the Coca-Cola model where they have their own distribution arm attached. So it's kind of like connected, you know, uh, it's a part of their business. So it's still distribution. Um, they have a sales department, but it's coming right from Coca-Cola. So vitamin water, Dasani, all that stuff that would Coke, Diet Coke, all that. Um, by the way, we probably have a ton at the cafes still. So I might have to send them all your way. Yes. Is two year old Coke bad? No, I don't care. It might it's, be flat, but I'll, I'll, I'll shake it up a little. <laughs> but like, I like that model more. I, I don't know why. Like, I, So felt- is that what you think Fanatics is going to be? Their own distribution? I, th- I guess it doesn't really pay to guess. We'll see what happens when when it happens. I thought that there was more value to that. I thought there was more customer service. Um, they cared more, right? Because you were selling their product, so like they would bring you really nice refrigerators that were included in the cost. They would get to know the business. Uh, I like that model way more than Balford, who would just come kind of leave the stuff and be out. I'll tell you, the thing that I see is look. I mean, who knows? The hobby may be on on its upswing still. You know, like, you know, we've obviously just had a, a two good, two very good years. And the distributors have had two very good years. And, and they're also probably wondering what's going to happen when Fanatics comes in. So they're trying to make as much money as they can now. But, you know, a real world scenario, right? If, if stuff slows down, yeah, they might be able to squeeze an extra 10 bucks a box or 20 bucks or 50 bucks a box from someone who's new now looking for product and breaking it online to the detriment of my LCS. But in a year, two or three, when when the products are not flying off the shelves, look, Panini is not selling out these products, right? And they, and the distributor is looking for somebody to buy. Maybe my LCS won't be there anymore. Maybe the people who were there buying from these distributors, taking the Sage and taking whatever the heck else is out there. I, I feel bad that everybody shits on Sage, but taking the products that were not, you know, not killer prism baseball. That's what my guy is like, Hey, we'll get you as much prism baseball as you want. He's like, I'm not taking prism baseball. If you're not going to give me prism basketball, like I'll take more baseball, but I gotta get some basketball. You know what I mean? And they're like, no, no, the basketball we can we can basically name our price on it. But I also what? think you it, know that might not be there for you. I also shoot. Is there another distributor in the hobby? Is it GTS is basically the big player? Yeah, no. Southern Hobby is another one. Go GTS. You know, mm-hmm. Steel City has their cards. You know, but there, there's but, a couple. There's a couple Peach but, down the south. It's but it's not like your 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 LCS could call Steel City and say, "Can hey, can you give me a, a location?" Because GTS just raised their prices, right? I mean, I'm sure he can. I don't know what they're gonna say. You know what I mean? Because what so, I thought was cool with, uh, I mean, the restaurant business, relatively low barrier to entry. You had different distribution, right? So if this guy raised prices, you could go elsewhere and get the same product. And I think that's cool. That's competition, right? Like these dis- distributors, they can raise price. They have inelastic demand and they know people will have to buy. And if they don't buy, they're going to go to coffee breakers or big stores or Burbank. And be well, like, that's the thing, buy. right? They know that they'll sell out. Correct. So if a, lo- a local guy says, I'm not going to pay that price, they know they're going to be able to sell it at a price. So, yeah, it's crazy. All right, my play. This is what Bleaker, my hat here, this is what Zablo was talking about when we had him on. If you guys didn't listen to that episode, yes, take did. a listen. And uh, before you get to play, just a public service announcement, guys. It's uh, you know you probably listened to this Saturday or early Sunday. Mint Collective, January twenty eighth to the thirtieth. Um, check out my page. I posted a little something about this. The uh, the nine ninety nine pass. They're they're basically their big all access pass. Their badge. Um, by uh, if you purchase it by uh, Sunday at midnight, so you know this weekend, um, there's five hundred fifty five dollars worth of uh, Beckett BGS grading that's thrown in with that. So you're getting back, you know, more than half of of uh, of what you're spending on the badge just in in value on grading. So I want to make sure that we uh, we mention that for you guys. Get ready on the fence. Don't be on the fence. Come because you get to hang out with me. You get to hang out with Andrew. You get to talk to the card ladder guys, newly minted millionaires. If they weren't millionaires before, from their collections, um, Christina's PC. Everybody forgets her, but you know, obviously, he's a millionaire right there as part of that team. Get to oh you know, God. get to you know, you get to get in the cage with Dana White. I'm just kidding. You don't actually get to do that unless you really make him mad, um, and then he might drag you into the cage and kick your ass. Dude, I'm really excited for Dana White and hearing what he's going to say. He's one of 
I think he's the best commissioner in sports right now. Yeah, I know people love Adam Silver, but dude, Adam Silver inherited a business that was thriving because of all the stars and all the athletes. And David Stern did a great job. Dana White built that shit from scratch, man. Yeah, like, he took it over when it was dying. So he didn't he didn't own it in the nineties, but yeah, it was basically dead. And he brought in, you know, Chuck and Tito and, and the Fertitta brothers and basically bought it for a song and, and sold it recently, although he's still running it. But his share was a lot of money. Right, but he still runs money. it. Yes, and he runs it. Do people take shots at him? Like Oscar De La Hoya takes shots at him. People take shots at, like, fighter pay. Um, and dude, I, I just – I'm really excited to see, hear what he has to say about the collectible space, right? This is someone I respect a lot as a businessman, so I want to hear – What's this guy think? Because that's not your typical speaker at a show. Yeah. And second, if you guys – like I know a 1000 bucks is a lot. So if you can't afford that, don't feel like you can't come. We're going to be doing giveaways with our audience. And specifically, if to our Lucas Tigers NFT holders, we're going to do something special for them. We're, gonna, we're working with Collectible to get you to the show as well. So I know that's a big price tag. Some people, I mean, some some of our audience, you know, that they work six, seven, six-figure jobs, seven-figure jobs. To them, it's, it'll be fun. But there's also people, you know, student debt, they just finished school, and they want to go. Don't feel that you are out of the loop. We are working on it behind the scenes to figure something out to do giveaways and get you guys there. And if you're listening, Sammy at Carter Christian and Hotshot, your cards went out today, and you guys got some good grades. I might, t- if, I might ask for permission to post some of those pictures. Some of these Pokemon returns we got, woof, some some nice tents, some good stuff. Um, but and also, guys, on the on the mid collective, listen, if you're going, you're going. If you're on the fence, you know, definitely reach out to us. Um, we'll definitely do some giveaways. But I'll say this: even if you're not able to go, because you know, there's several of our people listening to this are not going, no matter what the price is. I gotta give Andrew a lot of credit, man. You want to talk about FOMO? The first two days of the national this year, when I wasn't there, I was sitting at my desk, I was commuting to work, and I was on my phone watching this dude do lives and thinking to myself, Why am I not there? Look how much fun he's having. Look at it. And it's like walking from table to table. You know, hey, can I, you mind if I video? Look, look what this guy has on his table. Look what this guy. You were like the king of doing like the live experience there. So, you know, I'm sure we'll be able to do something like that for you guys for the Mint Collective as well. So, a lot of fun. And whatnot tomorrow, 10 a.m. 10 a.m., 10 a.m., week 13, right? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I think I'm going to have a profitable week, but more than likely not. Are the Jets going to go for their second win in a row? Really awesome game Monday night, Bills versus the, the Patriots. That's a great game. Great game. Really good game for the division. I, I mean, I'll have to check the schedule, but that's like – that's a cool game. Uh, I won't talk about the – the Jets play the Eagles tomorrow. What do you think? Play my Eagles. Well, should we save it for whatnot? We'll save, we'll it, save for it for whatnot. whatnot. So my play <laughs> is a low dollar buy-in to what I think is actually a pretty iconic card. Um, Tom Brady. Tom Brady cards of Ooh. sale, right? They've probably come down a little bit because of the market, but Tom Brady is maybe the best, if not the top three best investments in the game right now, right? Curry, Rand, Giannis, LeBron, Brady's right up there, right? And then there's his first real year. Like a lot of people use 2002 for some reason. It's the first year of Tom's Chrome, whatever it was. Why do people use 2002 for Brady, the black refractor specifically? Because there was no black refractor before that. But there was Tom's Chrome before that. Yeah. So, so what? you know that iconic card for Brady, 2002? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think – I don't. he might not have been in it. There was a Bowman – card for him rookie but i don't think he was in a chrome set before 02 That's remember like he was a, he was like a he was like a low draft pick right so that so was like were, you know they were, they debut, were he was in plenty of sets right i mean Fleer had him in metal you know upper deck had him in a lot of spx like, you know bowman had him and stuff but yeah i don't i don't think i don't think he was in the chrome set until 02 so what if i could tell you i have another tops product that you would get as psa 10 for 255 bucks and it's it's actually kind of a cool card. It's the Topps Heritage 2002 card. Sounds fantastic. It sounds like when people were smart and the 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 Topps update of Trout started running, and everybody bought into the Heritage one, and then that started running because it became an, a second option. Same same kind of thing. Bryce Harper has a Heritage rookie. Same sounds 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 pretty similar. Let's. I'll, I'll pull it up here. Tom Brady. There it is. So there's a retro factor. They're not card sharing. 
which is gorgeous. Um, you're not currently sharing if you're meant to. Yep. I am. Okay. I am. Yeah. Yay! Because I want to so see this, this card is super cool. This is like a retro fractor Ooh. card. I think it's numbered out of 557, which, if anyone out there is watching and they can know why that number, cool. What? So what does it say? 386 out of 557. Okay. This is the retro fractor. That's not what I'm suggesting. It does if not you... look like a $200 card. Correct. This is 10000 <laughs> okay. But 2002 Tops Heritage. Called the black back. So someone has it listed for this price, but that's not the true price of it. So you flip, kind of a really cool back. I, I like these kind of old school cards. Kind of reminds me of like the Johnny Unitas card. Yeah, it's, it's, it look, that's exactly what it looks like. What year is that? Fifty seven, maybe. Mm, where? Not sure. Not sure. Not sure. Not sure. Not sure. But it's cool. It says. In 1946, Bullet Bill Dudley of the Steelers led the league in rushing, interceptions, and punt returns. Should be busy, Bill Dudley, if you ask me. I don't know what that has to do with Tom Brady. It's like a all. comic. It looks like a cartoon or something. But no, that does. It looks like it. It looks like that's a cool card. In a PSA 10. Low pop card through and through. Look at this. This is when when I see this, it means you have to do some digging. Okay, so there's not a ton of sales. May 17th, you got a sale for 400 bucks. March 20th, you got a sale for 175. You got this best off. Basically, not a ton of recent transactions on this card. Our alt has it valued at 300 bucks. Someone here has it listed for 24, 2,500. I'd estimate this card is in a PSA 10, PSA 8, PSA 9, and raw dirt cheap, like 30, 40 bucks. You could get lots of it. A PSA 10, I would say, is probably five, six, seven hundred dollars right now. Just to be fair, Brady stuff has run. I don't think anyone's willing to part with it. They know the pop. But if I could get my hands on a 10 for that price, I think it's worth it because I think there's super little downside. What is it? Five hundred dollar card? Yeah. Well, but somebody think, somebody got four hundred bucks for it in March, right after we won the Super Bowl. So it might be right around that price. You know what it might be if you find one. You know, there's only sixteen of them. You know, and there's. Probably more than 16 fans of Brady out there would grab that. Thousand percent. It's a really hard PSA to find. There's a lot of raw cards. I wouldn't count on those gemming, but that's also an alternate play. If, if t- PSA tens are so scarce, I saw this with uh, the Kobe Ultra. Kobe Ultra PSA ten. There's 300, very low pop, but there's a ton of the base raw cards. What was cool is those were like 10, 15 dollar cards at one point. They, they got up to, at their peak, 80, 90 bucks because people were chasing for that PSA 10. Did, did Nat Turner call you again today to buy us? Or does he, no. take, the week, does he take the weekends off? I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. What would, he be, um, what would he be buying? This face. This knowledge. Oh, yeah. I think oh, we got a few things in the pipe that might be more interesting than. Um, I know what's in your pipe. We all know what's in your pipe. You got to grind it first. We understand. We know. We know. We know, pal. We know what's in your pipe. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Oh, dude, listen, this is a lot of fun. Love the Saturday stuff. And tomorrow we got Whatnot Early. We got the Collectible Fractional Report. Uh, you know, tomorrow night we got a full day of uh, football. I may during during the during the game be decorating the old Christmas tree. I haven't done that yet. It's up, and I haven't actually put the ornaments up on a lot of Disney ornaments. Maybe I'll take a picture and show you guys. Um, but yeah, man, there's, there's some. Uh, oh, there was an early basketball game today. Knicks, man, Knicks are eleventh in the East right now. Not Listen, not looking good. He doesn't get his due. Well, he, they're, they're going to end up the number one or two seed. It's just going to happen. You know what he's going to do? Embiid has put that team on his back, man, in crunch time. You see the fourth quarter that Philly had yesterday against the Hawks? They outscored them 20-9 to nine and won the game by two last minute at the end. And basically all Embiid. Running the offense through him, basically. You know, taking it inside, to kicking it out to Seth Curry for big shots. And, and um, you know. I hate their offense. I think it's so primitive. I think it's so primitive. It's fine, but look what they're doing. I think they have the same record. I mean, they're not. They're, they're, I think they're 12 and 11. I think the same record as the Hawks, basically. And what I liked about it, because I watched the game last night, was you could see when they won at the end of the game, he was celebrating, like, at half court, like, fist pumping, like, really excited, like, like youthful exuberance. Um, 
And he's really good, man. It sucks that he's stuck there. <laughs> he's really good. You know, the big, the big men, there's this. I'd, I'd love to see this become another time of the big man, although the hobby would hate it. Everybody wants, you know, everybody wants people shooting from the logo. Honestly, I, I'm kind of sick of it because it's not that big men don't get love. It's that the, we haven't had a Shaq type of big man. And maybe Jokic is probably the closest. And, like, dude, Embiid doesn't perform consistently. He just doesn't. And he he's not in shape. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. I haven't watched a ton of their games. I did watch yesterday, and I expected – the Hawks to win because they're much more athletic. They seem much more talented, one to five in the starting lineup. You know, Trey is out there doing his thing. John Collins is blocking and, you know, hammering the ball. You know, Clint Capella seemed at some points to have, you know, Embiid's number, but somehow a fourth quarter cut was a 20 to nine, you know, like 20 a, you know, nine, 29 right. runs, like a heck of a run there. And they, you know, they pulled it, they pulled, they pulled victory from the jaws of defeat. Like it was, it was a done, it was, you know, it was one of those live betting games where like you probably could have got like plus a thousand on uh on the sixers at some point in that fourth quarter uh, you, you know who you should watch out for and kind of like jokingly but this this happens oftentimes when um uh, a ball dominant inefficient rookie goes out with an injury the team actually does better and it's Jalen green and that's not that he doesn't have a bright future it's just we f- forget like we get so hyped up in rookies that we don't realize that vets are three times better than a rookie uh, more often than not. And believe it or not, this Houston Rockets team is on a five-game win streak. Five-game win streak. Granted, Magic, Thunder, Thunder, Hornets, you know, 146 to 143, and then Bulls. But the Bulls game, if you guys go back and look at the scheduling, the Bulls were on, like, the craziest schedule ever. So I don't think that they're a better team than the Bulls. Rockets are an interesting team. Warriors snapped the Suns' 18-game win streak easily too. It wasn't it? Wasn't really it wasn't a doubt. I, I never understand how Vegas does it. So Vegas set that line at minus seven. So I I was out last night and bet. I didn't even watch the games. I didn't get a chance to. But they they just are so good. You mean uh, the Warriors are favored by seven? For yeah, by seven. I mean they just played on the road to a basically even game. Where where the Suns just beat him at the end, and Curry had a historically poor performance. So at home, evenly matched teams. You know, you got to figure also the some of Vegas putting in there. The Suns know they're not going to win every game. You yeah. almost like all right, if we're going to let one go, this will be the one to let go and rest some guys in the fourth quarter or something like that. So that doesn't it doesn't surprise me that much. And one last thing, you guys should Shoot. notice if you're better or you hush game, the home and home. This happens a ton and. It, it, the against the spread, it's like it, the the Mavs blew out the Pelicans, and the Pelicans beat the Mavs. Yep, and, and that you see that happen all the time when it's a home and home. Um, one team covers, the next team covers the next game. Luca. All right, guys. Well, listen, this is fun. I want to go out and buy some Luca hypers now. Yeah. Peace. <laughs>